The old experimental sciences building is fast becoming the new Norman Hackerman building. Named in honor of Norm Hackerman, the late great leader, chemist, colleague and friend, the new building is under construction now on the corner of 24th and Speedway. The NHB will house leading faculty from the Center for Learning and Memory, Neuroscience, and the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Students will take organic chemistry in industry standard labs, and the School of Biological Sciences will have its administrative offices there. Off campus, but nearby, the building for the Dell Pediatric Research Institute has been constructed in Austin's growing Mueller community. The institute will be located across the street from the Dell Children's Hospital. The building is designed to house 28 faculty members or principal investigators doing translational research. It will include an array of programs related to children's health. A formal opening for the building is planned for fall 2009. Off campus in Port Aransas, the Marine Science Institute is gearing up for a growth spurt with plans to construct a new building for the Mission Aransas National Estuarine Research Reserve Headquarters. The new facility will house the Mission Aransas NUR administrative offices, labs, and conference rooms, and offices for graduate students, technicians, and administrative staff. MSI plans to expand its own labs on the third floor of the NUR headquarters and will include six wet laboratories, six faculty offices, space for graduate students, technicians, and postdoctoral researchers, a meeting room, and a classroom. This space for the Mission Aransas NUR and the MSI is highly needed for growth of this important program, helping to attract senior faculty, engage more graduate students, and draw in more research funds. On the other side of the MSI campus, the Wetlands Education Center has grown into a beautiful outreach and educational facility for students, visitors, and faculty at the Marine Science Institute. The WEC features a 3.5-acre salt marsh, an extensive boardwalk system, and an observation deck. Wetlands were planted last year, and they have truly begun their transformation into a vital, living laboratory for all people to experience. 45-minute tours are offered twice a week. Finding new sources of energy and increasing the efficiency of existing sources could be one of the greatest challenges of our time. College researchers are stepping up to that challenge in a variety of ways. Several groups are looking at biofuels, others are investigating ways to build better solar cells, and still others are working on hydrogen fuel cells and nuclear power. Dr. Al Bard and his colleagues at the Center for Electrochemistry recently received a $5 million grant from the Welch Foundation to start the Renewable Energy Initiative a multidisciplinary, collaborative effort to promote advances in renewable energy technologies. The funding will be used to develop new kinds of solar photovoltaic materials and create better batteries. Better energy storage is critical to maximizing the usefulness of renewable sources, such as wind and solar, that generate electricity intermittently. Several College of Natural Sciences biologists are leading research projects to produce fuel from algae. Algae are considered one of the best potential sources for biofuel. In this quest for biofuels, our faculty have the advantage of their expertise and the use of the university's algal culture collection, UTEX, which is the largest in the world. Scientists are researching better methods for harvesting the algae breaking the algal cells to extract oil, purify the algal oil for fuel production, and explore other industrial uses for the waste byproducts from the process. Three physicists in the Institute for Fusion Studies recently made waves with a proposed and now patented design for a fusion-fission hybrid reactor a new technology that could help combat global warming by making nuclear power cleaner. 
Well, the main reason the public gives for not wanting more nuclear power is nuclear waste. And so by destroying about 99% of the long-lived biohazard in the waste, we make nuclear power much greener. The fission-fusion hybrid uses the fusion as a source of neutrons, and those neutrons destroy the fission nuclear waste. That's actually much easier to do than using fusion as a source of pure energy, which unfortunately is well in the future. But because it's so much easier to use fusion this way, we think it can be done much, much sooner. Recently, the college installed a powerful new next-generation gene sequencing technology. The sequencer can rapidly catalog large genomes and scientists will use it to unravel the genetic causes of disease, develop better medical diagnostics, understand how animals adapt to climate change, and look at how genes influence behaviors like monogamy and aggression. This is the International Year of Astronomy, and the Department of Astronomy and McDonald Observatory's programs continue to grow at a fast clip. The University of Texas at Austin and Texas A&M University are founding partners in a collaboration to build one of the largest new telescopes of the future, the Giant Magellan Telescope, or GMT. The telescope will be able to probe the cosmos more deeply than any telescope in use today, giving us new information on the birth of stars, galaxies, and planetary systems, and the mysteries of black holes. The GMT's power derives from seven large mirrors that together will provide the power of one 25-meter mirror. GMT will be built in the Andes Mountains in Chile at Las Campanas Observatory. Other founding partners in GMT include Carnegie Mellon University, Harvard University, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, the University of Arizona, Australian National University, Astronomy Australia Limited, and the Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute. Texas astronomers are also getting closer to uncovering the secrets of dark energy using new technology built into the Hobby Eberly Telescope at the McDonnell Observatory. Well, dark energy is actually just a name that we're giving to the phenomenon that the universe is accelerating in its expansion. You know, uh, we expect the universe to actually decelerate through time because of all the galaxies and the other matter in the universe, which actually through gravity are pulling it together. But in fact, now that we've measured it, it's accelerating, something's pushing it apart, and this thing is what we call dark energy, but that's all we know about it. Dark energy has been called the most important question in science today and the Texas experiment for discovering the nature of dark energy, called HET-DEX, is considered by many to be one of the strongest projects in the country. The HET-DEX project includes building instrumentation, named VIRUS, on the Hobby Eberly Telescope that will help researchers create the largest map of the universe ever produced. The virus actually works in, a, uh, in an interesting way uh, because it actually uh, can look at 42,000 points on the sky simultaneously. We don't have to go targeting individual galaxies uh, and moving around mechanisms to try to take the light from, say, one galaxy and measure it. In another great collaboration for the state of Texas, Texas A&M has recently joined the HETDEX project. The two universities are collaborating on building virus, and the project is on track to provide results before any of the major federally funded dark energy projects. We've established the new Texas Cosmology Center. The center, led by Iichiro Kumatsu, brings together faculty from the departments of astronomy and physics to study fundamental phenomena such as dark matter and dark energy, the origin of cosmic inflation, the origin of matter in the universe, and emergence and evolution of the structures in the universe. At the College of Natural Sciences, we are constantly pushing at the boundaries of knowledge, exploring the mind, the body, the earth and its systems, and the universe. We will find answers to fundamental questions in these areas that will forever alter our world and we are educating the next generation of scientists, teachers, scholars, and entrepreneurs. What starts here changes the world.